Film adaptations are everywhere in the industry. The most popular films today are based off of a novel, a comic book, or even another film. Hell, they even make movies based off of theme park rides and toys. There's no secret to why these films do so much better than original screenplays. Most people say they want to discover something new and not pay for the same basic formula over and over again, but the reality is that familiarity breeds contempt. People don't risk spending their time and money on something unknown. In fact, even original movies have some form of familiarity to them. They either have popular household name actors as the stars, or even just knowing a famous director is part of the project can make people feel comfortable in taking the chance to see a film. We say that we want to experience something new, but to completely give yourself to something unknown can be scary. Well, as scary as thinking you'll be bored for about an hour and a half of your life anyway. It would be like trying to buy a product you barely know anything about. The more a film is able to convey what it's about, the safer we feel when handing over our cash. But that doesn't really explain why film adaptations do so well compared to every other medium. I mean, books that are based on original movies come out all the time, but no one was lining up to get a copy of Total Recall at Barnes & Noble, and the graphic novel community didn't stay up past midnight to read their copy of Star Wars Episode 3, both of which actually do exist. So do we think of film as a higher form of art? Well, that can't be true. Each medium has their advantages and disadvantages of telling a story. Saying that film tells stories better is based on personal opinion, but what's an actual fact is that fan engagement for films is much more noticeable than any other medium. But why? To me, the answer is fairly simple. We experience films the same way we experience life. We listen and we observe. It's one thing to read about Harry Potter defeating Voldemort, but to see it and hear it happen makes it much easier to grasp. With a film, there is less in the way of understanding a story. A novel can be as descriptive as possible, but every reader is going to imagine different details that the author isn't explaining. The reader is supposed to fill in the gaps with their own imagination, and that's part of the fun of reading, but with a movie, every detail is finalized. Each aspect of a movie is set in stone, and there is no room for debate on how a character sounds or looks. This makes films feel more finalized. They feel like they are the ultimate interpretation. However, an adaptation has a disadvantage over original movies, and to me, it's a much bigger hurdle to jump over than just being unknown. It's that there are now two versions of the same story to compare. An adaptation is married to the reputation of the product before it, and it has more to live up to. Because it's one thing to get fans excited for a movie before it's released, but that never translates to a good adaptation, and pulling off one that caters to movie fans and fans of the source material is a very tricky science. And it depends on many factors, like the original medium the story was told in. The Hunger Games novels take advantage of its medium to tell a more engaging story. In the book, you read from the perspective of Katniss Everdeen, fighting for her life in a battle royale. Each action she makes is the result of her careful thought process, and actually reading why she made her decisions makes you truly understand the survivor mentality. She constantly tells the reader what she is thinking, and it makes moment-to-moment -moment decisions feel smart and precise. With the film, however, you never get to hear what's going on in her head. All you do is see her make the actions, and the motivations behind her actions feel less methodical. The filmmakers could have had Katniss narrate the whole time, but that's considered sloppy filmmaking. With the film, they are losing a huge aspect that the original material strived on, and it makes for a different experience. Even though the plot is still very much the same as the book, losing that detail of storytelling makes the film feel like it's missing something. This usually describes most movies based off novels. Very rarely do you ever see a film expand on a novel and show you details about it you never got in the book. Movies have to constantly drop entire scenes or characters to fit a runtime or fit the flow of the story, and you ultimately end up with a neutered version of the original source material. Some filmmakers think it's a good idea to adapt an adaptation. We can see this between The Amazing Spider-Man by Mark Webb and 2002 Spider-Man by Sam Raimi. I could probably do an entire video explaining the subtle differences between the two adaptations, but I just want to focus on one plot point that I think summarizes how I feel about these two films, Uncle Ben's death. 
Spider-Man as a hero is a discussion on when you are given a power to help others, it is your responsibility to do good, and I think Sam Raimi's film hits the nail on the head with this. With his film, Spider-Man is trying to win money from a wrestling contest. He has to last three minutes in the ring to gain $3,000. He wants to use this money to impress Mary Jane, and he is going to use his powers to gain that money. He actually wins the cage match in under three minutes, but is denied all of the money because of a technicality. Now get out of here. A hundred bucks. The ad said 3000 well, check it again, webhead. It said three grand for three minutes, and you pinned them in two. For that, I give you a hundred, and you're lucky to get that. I need that money. I missed the part where that's my problem. A thief then robs the wrestling joint, and Peter is the only one that is able to stop the bad guy, but he takes a sidestep and lets him go out of revenge. You could have taken that guy apart. Now he's gonna get away with my money. I missed the part where that's my problem. In The Amazing Spider-Man, Peter's selfishness doesn't come from a frustrating technicality. It's because he wasn't able to buy milk. I don't have two cents. You can't afford your milk, just step aside. But daddy didn't give you enough milk money today? It's two cents, we're talking about two cents. Just step People. aside, kid. <laughs> Also, when the thief is trying to run away, the clerk suddenly asks Peter to help even though he has no reason to do so, and in this version, Peter doesn't even have to make an effort to let him go. In Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, he had to actively sidestep, indicating that he truly wanted this misfortunate event to happen unpunished, when everyone around him knew that he was the only guy capable of stopping him. Every detail in Sam Raimi's film indicates that Uncle Ben's death was Peter's fault, and his actions still felt justified through a clear and relatable personal frustration. In The Amazing Spider-Man, each detail is not as impactful to the overall theme, and that is why I think it's a weaker adaptation. It's weird to think that we can like adaptations at all. When an artist works on their art, they generally make the best decisions for that art. And when someone else comes by to Frankenstein their work into something completely different, it can be frustrating. But an adaptation shouldn't just be a copy. Each time you make an adaptation for a new medium, you are going to have to sacrifice many things for it to work. But while you are losing the advantages of the old medium, you can still take the advantages of the new medium. Adapting our favorite stories to new mediums can force us to apply new techniques to them, ones we never thought might fit perfectly until we see them in action. We might end up with versions of the story we find better, or at least unique versions that feel like a fresh new experience. Adaptations are never going to recreate the feeling of discovering our favorite stories again, but seeing the story through a new pair of eyes can be the closest thing to that feeling. From the surface, adaptations seem like cash grabs, meant to ride the popularity of the original source material, and we might just end up telling the same stories over and over again. But amazing stories are worth telling over and over again, and as long as people take new perspectives of our favorite stories, we are never really going to get tired of them.